Okay, so again, if you're new to this channel or you know, you're not familiar with my uh, reviews of this nature when I do the more geeky stuff, I tend to just do these little bits at the beginning where I give my overall thoughts, and then there's going to be a big spoiler section after that. So, okay, okay. Uh, so, yes, this is the premiere of Loki Episode 1, and overall I think I'm going to give it a B. Um, it's not so much the idea behind it or the storytelling or the performances. I think those were all decent and good. I did think there was some decent world building throughout all this. However, the presentation just felt a little off. Uh, the sound was just really muted. Like, there were times when Loki would sound fine, but then suddenly, you know, other characters would speak up. I don't feel like this a lot. I know I'm not just doing a bad old Wilson voice here. Yeah, so it, it got really hard to figure out what was going on. I really had to crank the volume up high. So that really dis doesn't help there. Um, and also, uh, I'm not entirely sure where they're going with this. It looks, as again, you're dealing with, I'll spoil a little bit here, and that you are dealing with time travel. But yeah, so it's getting, going to be kind of convoluted. But overall, I did think the presentation was decent. And like I said, I am intrigued to see where this is going. So again, storytelling wise, not bad. Performance wise, not bad. Just, uh, you know, technical issues kind of held this back for me. If you're looking for adventure this summer, escape with Marvel Comics, fight crime with Spider-Man, meet the Fantastic Four, and watch Captain America in action. May the Force be with you as you battle the evil empire in Star Wars. Discover the secrets of the South American jungle in Raiders of the Lost Ark. And with Marvel Comics, you're never alone because they can go with you in the car or to the park, even on a rainy day. Marvel Comics are your ticket to fun and adventure this summer. Okay, so the first episode basically begins from Avengers Endgame, basically. Uh, we see where Loki reacquired the Tesseract and used that to teleport away and break free, at which point he winds up in the Gobi Desert. He starts speaking to some of the locals, but then suddenly these weird people appear out of nowhere, uh, render Loki unconscious and carry him away. Um, they sort of wipe the people's minds a little bit. I don't know what exactly it is that happened there, but anyway, they sort of wipe their minds and he's whisked off. Um, and then from there we learn that he's been pulled in by the Time Variant Agency. The idea is, at one point there was a big multiverse and then all of these varying timelines where uh, something happened that splintered all everywhere into these different timelines, all these varying timelines began fighting with each other. And finally a group called the Time Keepers basically said, no, we're fixing this, we're just going to weave everything into one single timeline and you're going to get along. So yeah, there's just one timeline, except every so often Someone just falls a little bit out of place and fractures off into its own timeline and they have to eliminate it to keep the time stream, you know, in basically one single motion. Uh, if you leave, it could splinter off in various ways and that could splinter off in various ways. So yeah, that is where the uh, whole time travel theory comes in there. And Loki is one of these variants now because of what he did with the, uh, the Tesseract. But he says, well, you know, the Avengers were, I only did that because the Avengers traveled back in time, so why aren't they being on trial? Why aren't they on trial as well? And they basically said, well, no, that was supposed to happen. They're supposed to travel back in time and defeat, and do all the things they need to do. So that's not, a, you know, a viable choice. It's actually, that was actually kind of, uh, that was uh, kind of unique there that they could uh, easily rectify that a little bit. But then you get, uh, um, Owen Wilson's character, who was Agent Mobius M. Mobius, um, and he's investigating this weird thing that's happening to all these time these TVA agents who keep getting killed. One just got killed in 16th century France, and the lone witness to it points to a picture of the devil, and uh, she's holding some modern chewing gum. So, yeah, and it says again, the devil gave that to her, and he wants to take Loki under his wing because he wants to find out what exactly makes Loki tick. He wants to know why the god of mischief is so mischievous, even though he's not really, he's, well, evil. He's been doing evil things. Loki takes this as an opportunity to try to escape. He requires the Tesseract, but then, as they're kind of going through some of the uh, TVA files, he discovers the Infinity Stones are there, and it's like, yeah, everyone's got them. They use them as paperweights. And he sort of realizes, oh, the Infinity Stones are actually, like, you know, not powerful. These people are more powerful than the Infinity Stones and the Tesseract. You know, maybe I shouldn't be leaving here exactly. And he sort of looks into his own timeline. So 
uh, earlier Mobius, when trying to reach him, sort of showed him, hey, this is what's supposed to happen. You know, you're supposed to be taken back to Asgard. You have this interaction with your mother. And then, you know, the Dark Elves try to take over again. You think you're directed to the Thor, but in reality you direct them to her and you kill, uh, wind up causing her death. And he's sort of upset about this, and then he continues to look. It also shows a brief flashback where uh, Loki lost a bet to Thor, and so he travels to Earth, and it turns out Loki is D.B. Cooper, which, admittedly, I now want to see Tom Hiddleston playing D.B. Cooper in a movie. Uh, anyway, uh, yeah, so, uh, anyway, I uh, did, what was that, oh, can't travel back in time to fix that, um, anyway, uh, sorry again, okay, uh, oh, okay, he, he goes through the timeline, and he continues through the timeline, so he sees Odin's death, he sees him and Thor kind of bonding in Thor Ragnarok and becoming a family once again, but then he sees his death at the hands of Thanos. And realizing that the TVA is more powerful than Thanos, he's real, kind of in this point where I don't know if he necessarily reaches his breaking point, but he definitely reaches a point where he finally confesses why he acts the way he does to Mobius. And it's that he thinks, you know, he, basically the evil is to cover up his, his own insecurities. You know, he's always... Because of his nature as a frost giant, as the child of a frost giant that was adopted by Odin, he's always felt out of place, and so he thinks, "Well, if I feel out of place. That must mean I'm more special than what I'm supposed to be. I'm supposed to rule." And it's kind of a, sort of a way to cover up his own inferiority complex, for lack of a better term. And Mobius comes to him and he says, "Well, see, here's the thing. I, I don't know if I can tr offer you true redemption, but I can at least offer you a chance to do something right for once." And we need you to bring in a rogue variant that is, you know, killing TVA agents. And, and we see them being lured into, tr uh, at this point, they are in Oklahoma in 1858, where someone has been drilling for oil with technology that shouldn't exist yet. And this person, you know, has actually lured the TVA into a trap and set these agents on fire, where they're all killed. Exactly. So, yeah, someone's going through and killing all these agents. And basically, Mobius says, the rogue variant is you, <laughs> or some version of Loki, apparently. Now, they didn't show it completely, so I don't know if that's necessarily the case, or that's just a red herring. So that could lead to some interesting ideas, but yeah, uh, Loki is basically being brought in to apprehend himself, apparently. I don't really know. Like I said, the fact that they did not show Loki committing this crime at the end tends to make me think otherwise, like maybe it's someone else in this case. Um, but yeah, it definitely could be very interesting. So yeah, like I said, overall it was all right. Like I see the story sounds interesting, doesn't it? I mean, I think execution wise, Tom Hiddleston is great as Loki as always, Owen Wilson is good as Mobius. Uh, there's a judge who's very, it was in it very briefly and um, you know, she's obviously gonna be this recurring thread throughout it where she disapproves of Mobius's motives and this idea, and she's going to be the naysayer, so. But she's not really in it that much. There is a very humorous animated short film uh, with Tara Strong as Ms. Minute, where she sort of, again, explains the whole timeline thing and how that's playing out. And then there's this office assistant that seemed to have popped up, and he was a little comic relief himself, uh, because when Loki tries to escape, he takes this guy hostage and says, I'm going to cut you like a fish, and he's like, I don't know what fish is. I've lived here my entire life. I don't know what you're talking about. Um, also, a scrawl popped up at one point, so that could be kind of interesting as well. Um, but yeah, like I said, presentation, like acting performance-wise, storyline-wise, I think that was all fine. Just again, the technical issues with the sound. I mean, the times are just people are talking like this, and I can't hear anything. I had to crank my volume up almost all the way to 40 on my TV just to hear what was going on. It, Maybe, I, have, I am running fans, if you can tell, but I, I haven't had that problem with any other video on Disney Plus like that, so, yeah, again, it just doesn't seem to make any sense to me, but, yeah, that's why I gave it a B. So, yeah, again, overall, I am intrigued, I am up for more, but uh, hopefully they can fix that and make it a bit more palatable as this runs on. Super speed. Did you guys say something? Super strength. Huh. You can unleash your inner hero with BK Kids Meals and Superhero Squad Toys. One for Kids Meal, now at Burger King. 
Okay, so the next video is going to be the recap and review for NXT TakeOver In Your House 2, 2021. Okay, whatever it is. Um, after that, the next movie review is going to be for Pixar's Luca. Um, that's premiering straight to Disney+. Plus. It's not a premium thing, so I can review that right away. Uh, after that, it's going to be the uh, random trade review on Dark Soccer's Volume 1. And then rounding that part off, we get the recap and review for WWE Hell in a Cell 2021. So, okay, <laughs> um, that should be everything. Uh, don't know um, if they're good. Uh, there might be one more movie review for June, I'm not sure. Um, there will be another low key review at the end of the series. I don't know how many parts it is. I think it's eight. I may be wrong on that. I haven't found anything to say otherwise. But yeah, again, uh, when this fin when that finishes, I'll do another uh, recap and review covering all of that. Um, and uh, hopefully, maybe I can get into theaters eventually. Uh, again, right now I'm planning for Black Widow to be the first movie I see in theaters again. So hopefully we can get through that and get some more movie reviews afterwards. See you all next time. Hey guys, remember, you can help support my channel at patreon.com forward slash sleepy time for cat productions, where you can help request a movie, even if it's something like, say, Sonic the Hedgehog or the next Purge film. I'll review it.